Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Thanks for joining me again in the card closet. This is Eric, and I am happy to show you another completed set tonight. This is the 1972 Topps Baseball set, and it was by far the most brutal set that I have ever put together. 787 cards strong, which was an all-time record for Topps at that time. 131, yes, 131 high-numbered cards, and an additional 131 semi-high-numbered cards. That's a tall order, and it's taken me a number of years to finally get this thing put to bed. And I'm glad to show it. I don't have any binders, so I'm going to show these page by page this year, this way, since I'm out of binders right now. So the 72 Topps Baseball set starts off with the playoff cards. And you've got some uh, interesting cards here of the Pittsburgh Pirates winning it all. Got Brooks Robinson, Roberto Clemente, Brooks Robinson again. Then we get into the Orioles. Very nice design this year. It just screams 70s. The colors. It's got this uh, superhero letters in motion view for the team names. You just got to love it. Here's some more Orioles here. Big name on the page. Jim Palmer. And the Robinson brothers, Brooks and Frank. Here's a Don Baylor's uh, rookie star card. Not his rookie card. That was in 71. Then you get to the Red Sox. Hall of Famers here. Luis Aparicio. There's a bunch of these. I think they said there were six dozen or 72 in-action cards in this set, so it's not just the All-Stars, it's just a lot of other players too. Yeah, look at the Rookie Cup on these cards. So tall. Takes up a good portion of the picture area. This set for me is in pretty good condition. A lot of these cards I bought at card stores and just went for condition on a lot of these. So there's Carl Yastrzemski and the Carl Yastrzemski in action. This one right here is the the biggest rookie in the set, Carlton Fisk. Shares the card with Mike Garman and Cecil Cooper. That Carlton Fisk card is the second most valuable card in the set. The most valuable card is coming up on the next team here. The California Angels, they were called at the time. Not seeing it yet, but uh, maybe you know who it's going to be just by the team. I believe that it's this player's first card on the Angels. Nolan Ryan, most valuable card in the set right there. And I'm going by the Beckett. Beckett uh, official price for that for that. Uh, here's here's a Rich Allen card his MVP year Some people think he should be in the Hall of Fame although I'm uh, not one of them White Sox Not a lot of big names on the White Sox so far Wilbur Wood, I guess he was kind of a big name. The team now known as the Guardians. Kurt Bavakwa.
Hall of Famer Gaylord Perry there. A lot of Hall of Famers in this set. Lots and lots. On to the Detroit Tigers. Got some Norm Cash going on there. Willie Horton earlier in his career. Here is Al Kaline. He strikes almost the same pose as the infamous Billy Martin card. Let the reader understand. And we get into the Kansas City Royals. I say this all the time, but if you're new to the channel, you'll you'll notice that I sort my sets by team. I think they just display a lot better when the same team is all together. And that's usually because there's a common color pattern to the teams. But if you put them in your book one, two, three, four order, gets all jumbled up. Here's Lou Pinella. Milwaukee Brewers when they were in the American League. More Brewers. Jim Lonborg, Cy Young Award winner for the Red Sox in 67, sitting on the Brewers this year. And then we get to the local favorite, Minnesota Twins. And this Rod Carew card, because it's a high number and he's a Hall of Famer, it is the third, tied for third, most valuable card in the set. Here's an early Burt Blylevin. Rod Carew in action. Hall of Famer Jim Cott. Jim Cott in action. Hall of Famer Harmon Kilbrew. Harmon Kilbrew in action. Shout out to Near Mint Musings. More twins. Soon to be Hall of Famer Tony Oliva. Jim Perry, a couple of years after his Cy Young. I've golfed with him before, mentioned that in prior videos. The last card I needed in the set, the Rick Dempsey Rookie Stars card. And then we get to the Yankees. Yankees weren't very good these years. A few names, though, you should probably recognize. Like Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson in action. I like how they call it in action, and he's just standing there talking to the pitcher. Now, here's an in action card, Bobby Mercer. That's in action. And finishing up the Yankees, getting into the A's. 1972 was the start of their big run of dominance. Got Vita Blue here. Raleigh Fingers. Jim Mudcat Grant. Here's a good one, Reggie Jackson. And the Reggie Jackson in action card, Catfish Hunter. Blue Moon Odom. He's also got an action card. Looks like the guy's going to tip over here with that uh, follow through. And then we get to the Rangers. And the Rangers, you know, 69, 70, 71, 72, their best card is their manager card. <laughs> and you'll see why in a minute. A lot of airbrushing going on uh, with the Ranger cards because 
they were a new team. Well, no, they weren't a new team, but they had a lot of players that... Actually, I don't know why. Maybe it was their first year that they weren't the Senators? That could be why. And they just didn't have logos yet. Here's their manager card. I think that's the reason, because they became the Rangers from the Senators, and their caps all probably would have had Senators logos on them. Then we get into, in between the leagues here, the batting leader was Tony Oliva. Home run leader was Bill Melton of the White Sox. RBI leader, Harmon Kilbrew. Vita Blue led the league in ERA. Mickey Lolich led the league in strikeouts. And Mickey Lolich also led the league in wins. National League batting leader was Joe Torrey. Stargell led the league in home runs. Joe Torrey led the league in RBIs. Rest in peace, Tom Seaver led the league in ERA and strikeouts. And Fergie Jenkins led the league in wins. Getting into the National League. Here's Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron in action card. More Braves here. Orlando Cepeda, Hall of Famer. Here we go with more Braves yet. Tony La Russa. Still more Braves. Not sure why they had so many cards in their team. But uh, here's, here's card 787. Last card in the set, Ron Reed. Here's Tom House. I believe he would catch the Hank Aaron home run number 715, if I recall. And then the Cubs. Somebody mentioned this in my last video. The Cubs in the 70s and into the 80s had the Floating Heads team cards instead of them all standing on bleachers in rows together. Not sure why the Cubs did that. But they did it every year. More Cubs. Shout out to Vintage Card Steve. Fergie Jenkins. Ron Santo. Ron Santo got an in-action card. You know, and just making the point that there's really no rhyme or reason who got the in-action cards. So Joe Pepitone got one. But as you remember, Fergie Jenkins led the league and was in the top three in many categories. He did not get an in-action card. So not exactly sure what they're thinking was there. Here's another Hall of Famer, Billy Williams. And then we get into... The Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine, was kicking it into high gear in 72. Sparky Anderson as the manager. He's from South Dakota. I've got a video where I drive to his hometown and show the field that's named after him if you want to go back in my archive a little bit. Here's Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench in action. George Foster. Hal McRae. Don Gullett. Some of the pieces of those 75-76 seasons were here already. Pete Rose card is the seventh most valuable card in the set. Here's Pete Rose in action. Hall of Famer Tony Perez. Then we get into the Houston Astros when they were in the National League. Cesar Cedeno, like him as a kid. He was later in his career at that time, though. Lee May, I remember him on the Orioles. Joe Morgan, who would be a big piece of the Big Red Machine, but he was still on the Astros here in 72. A lot of rookie star cards, as you can see. Uh, here's J.R. Richard. 
But again, just not many big rookies in this set. Here's a Bill Buckner Rookie Cup card. Here's manager Walt Olson. We're in the Dodgers team here. So Steve Garvey, Tommy John. Claude Osteen, Don Sutton. Don Sutton did not get a an inaction card either. And coming towards the end of his career, here is Hoyt Wilhelm. Long, long career, knuckleball pitcher. Here's Maury Wills, who had the stolen base record. Probably at this time, he still had the record. And we get to the Montreal Expos. For you youngsters, they are the Washington Nationals now. Again, not a lot, another team with not a lot of star power. Their manager, Gene Mock, I guess, made a name for himself over the years. Then we get into the Mets. year before they were between championships in 1972 here's Jerry Kuzman very very good pitcher for them back at the time and his in action card here's Gil Hodges their manager more Mets Tug McGraw, Tom Seaver, probably one of the first cards I had from the 72 set because I was a fan of his as a kid and did try to put together a career run for him way before I was doing that for anybody else. Uh, there's his in-action card. And then we get into the Phillies. Larry Boa, who would become a manager. Greg Luzinski, the bull. Tim McCarver, catcher. Big set here. Glad you're staying with me. Some more Phillies, and then we get to the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. A lot of big names. Uh, Roberto Clemente tied for the fifth most valuable card. There's his inaction card. He was tied with Hank Aaron. I forgot to mention that when the Hank Aaron card showed. But again, more world champion. Pittsburgh Pirates, here's Bill Mazeroski. Uh, technically a Hall of Famer in a very high-numbered card, so it was a difficult one to get. Al Oliver, I really liked him when he was on the Rangers. Manny Sanguian. Here's Willie Stargell. Pops. A few more Pirates here. We've got the Willie Stargell in action card. And then we get to the St. Louis Cardinals, and we've got Lou Brock. More Cardinals, not a lot of name power here. Red Shane Dienst. Here's Joe Torrey as a player. Hall of Famer Ted Simmons on the Cardinals there. Shout out to Topps Vintage 316. And then come the Padres. Not a lot of name power there either. More Padres. The crazy thing about completing this set is with the high numbered cards, you're you're paying four or five times 
the price for a no name high number guy than you'd play than you'd pay for a Hall of Famer regular number guy. Here's Bobby Bonds. For you youngsters, that's Barry Bonds dad. Giants had quite a few good players this year as well. Like Willie Mays. Willie Mays is the third most expensive card in the set. Mine is very lacking, as you can see. This is one I picked up really early on. Here's Juan Marichal and his inaction card. I believe this is Dave Kingman's rookie card, if you're a King Kong fan. Uh, Willie Mays had his inaction card here. Uh, Willie McCovey, Hall of Famer at first base. Sudden Sam McDowell. And that does it for the teams. Then they do some interesting things here. So in the last series, so these are all high numbered, they, they did a tr some traded cards. So if you ever get the trivia question, what's the first year that Topps did traded cards? It's 1972. And it was an insert. I shouldn't say insert. It was just part of this set in the last series. So some of the big names, Joe Morgan being traded to the Reds. Frank Robinson being traded to the Dodgers. Steve Carlton being traded to the Phillies. And then they did six cards showing the trophies that... Could be one for winning the various awards. MVP, Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, the Babe Ruth Award, the Commissioner's Award, and the Player of the Year Award, Minor League Player of the Year Award. And then they threw in some childhood photos, boyhood photos of the stars. They did that of several players here. Again, no real rhyme or reason as to who they picked. Maybe it was just uh, who was willing to participate or whose pictures they had access to. Uh, here's Tom Seaver as a kid. Willie Stargell. It uh, doesn't look like a little kid there. Probably a minor leaguer at that point. Lou Pinella. You can tell that's Lou Pinella, can't you? And then there were a couple more of those. Mel Stottlemyre. Joe Torrey. Look at Joe Torrey all dressed up as a kid there. That's pretty cool. You can see the resemblance. And then they end it with their checklist cards. And then there were a couple uh, rookie cards, or uh, also, uh, rookie star cards, that had multiple teams on them. So there's a Ron Say, Bernie Williams, but not that Bernie Williams. There you have it. That's the 1972 Topps baseball set. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, quite a bugger of a set to put together. I'm glad it's finally done, and I'm glad I can finally say 1972 Topps baseball is in the books.